Welcome to week two of our new devotional series entitled, God, Know Him, Love Him, Show Him. Well, last week, in week one, we talked about the name of God being Elohim. And Elohim shows up in Genesis 1, chapter 1, as the mighty creator or the authoritative author of everything we see, the universe, the planets, the sky, the firmament in the sky. God created everything. He is our Elohim. And now in week two, we want to transition from this bigger, maybe 3,000 foot view of God called Elohim to a name, Yahweh. God is Yahweh. And in scripture, Elohim and Yahweh are names of God and have very similar meaning. But whenever Elohim is used, it's talking about this divine creator. But when Yahweh is introduced, it's always in a personal, human relational aspect. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, this is a verse I like to call the transitional repeat verse says, this is the account of the heavens and earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, kind of reaching all the way back to Elohim in Genesis 1.1. But we get this word Lord, and Lord in a lot of translations, probably in your translation of the Bible, you'll see that these letters are all uppercase, but they're a smaller uppercase. And whenever you see this in scripture, that can always be translated or have a root in the word Yahweh. But what this transition is, this Elohim 3,000 foot view of God into this personal, I want a relationship with you kind of God. And we get the story in Exodus chapter 3, 13 to 15. You get Moses talking with God. Now God wants him to go set the Israelites free, go to Pharaoh. And we know if you don't know, but Moses was very concerned about this. He didn't think he was qualified. And so in verse 13, Moses says this to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Names were very, very important back in the ancient world. Names kind of noted the characteristics or brought relevancy to who you're talking about. So this is why Moses asked this. And then God said to Moses, I am who I am, which is Yahweh. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Yahweh, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. So we see this transition from a creator God to a personal creator God, a God who wants to interact and be living and breathing aspects of our lives, of your life, of my life. And that's very important that we know we serve a God, a Yahweh, who wants a personal relationship with you. It's incredible. And then the whole story is about how God loves you so much that he's going to send Jesus Christ with you because we live in sin and we need somebody to be our mediator to get to God because he desires that relationship with you. The creator of the universe, Elohim, now this Yahweh God who brings a personalized version of himself to us to interact with. And I want to close this week and why I'm sitting down is I just want to read a story to you. This is from the book, When Faith is Forbidden, 40 Days on the Front Lines with Persecuted Christians by Todd Nettleton. And he tells a bunch of these stories about how God is still relating to us and wanting to have interaction with us. And he tells of a woman called Afruz. Now Afruz tells this story as they're sitting in a one room house. She says this, I was studying, going to college and working. I was under pressure. My mother and father weren't with me, so I was lonely. Therefore, I prayed to Allah to help me relax and the pressure would go away. I tried my best as a Muslim. I followed the religious orders of Islam. I did my best to get as deep as possible, gaining access to Allah as much as possible. But actually, the stress was growing and the mental pressure was beating me up and absorbing all of my energy. At my job, they sent me to another company to work in another place for a month, so I had more problems and more work to do in addition to my studies. One night in my room, I talked to Allah and I complained. How much pressure? This is enough. 
How much can I stand? I'm working and studying. Why aren't you helping me? Why aren't you giving me relief? And then I threatened. If you're going to help me tonight, show yourself to me. If you don't show me a sign tonight, then I will turn to this material life and I'll become a sinner. So after I finished, I said, I will be staying up all night and waiting for your sign so I can see and believe that you're here with me, Allah. I was talking to the God of Muhammad. I was expecting to see Allah. I complained for an hour. I got tired, so I put my head on my prayer mat. It was midnight. I saw a light coming into my room and spreading. I was frightened and I ran out of the room. And then I told myself, didn't I ask for something? So I convinced myself that I should go back and sit in the prayer place and see what would happen. The room was full of light. I thought it was the morning, but later I realized it was midnight. I lifted my head and was seeing Jesus Christ. He was wearing white. While I had never seen a picture of the Messiah, I recognized that this could only be the Messiah. I liked to write poems, so I always had a paper and pen ready for things that would come to my mind. Immediately at that time, I started to take notes. I wrote, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I actually got a little bit angry at this. I was looking for Muhammad's God, and Jesus the Messiah comes to me. What is this? So I closed up the prayer mat and said, I am done with this. I'm going to sleep. Well, the next night, I dreamed and saw the Messiah. He said, didn't I tell you to come under my shadow and come with me and be safe? So I was telling myself, this is the Messiah coming to me. Is this the real God? I should be seeing Allah or even Muhammad. One of my colleagues in my new workplace noticed I was upset and asked, is something wrong with you? I said, well, my mother is in America and I haven't seen her in a while. I don't know if I'll ever be able to see her again. That is what's bothering me. He started calming me down and he said, God is always with you. God is love. Bring your complaints to him. Usually in Iran, people working in a company don't come up to you and say, I'm a Christian. After I was there for about three weeks, he came up to me and told me that he was a Christian. So when he was talking to me about God's love, I started to complain, what kind of God would allow me to feel this way, to have this type of pressure? And, and then Todd Nettleton wrote that a fruise pulled out the notebook that she carried with her every, everywhere and showed her new friend, me, the words written in her room the night of the vision. Come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See the relational God here, Yahweh? Well, her coworker pulled out a book of his own, carefully going through the pages until he found the one he was looking for. He held it out to Efruz, pointing to a particular spot on the page. Efruz looked, and the words in this book, Matthew 11, 28, were the same words she'd written down in her notebook. What book is this, she demanded. It was from the first Bible she'd ever seen. Her friend told her what it was and even offered to get one for her. That, Efruz told us, was the beginning of my faith. It was a first step on a long road, and the road would not be an easy one. You see, for Efruz, she was looking for a God who didn't exist, Allah, the God of Muhammad. Instead, God came to her, this Yahweh God, this personal God came to her, quoted scripture to her, or allowed her to write down word for word what Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 tells us, that God is the God who wants us to come to him, to give us rest, to not be weary. He'll be our strength. It's all over the word of God, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, that God is our Yahweh, our personal creator who seeks to have a relationship with every single one of us. So go to him. Don't be afraid to go to this Yahweh, our personal God who loves you.